Hey guys. So today I wanted to talk to you about a topic that has been on my mind for quite some time. While I've been learning Russian, I've had a lot of language exchanges. And I've noticed a lot of times that there are particular words that when a Russian, native Russian speaker says the word, it just doesn't seem to come out right. And no matter how many times I try to correct them, it seems like it keeps happening over and over again. So the word I want to start with is the word situation. Now, in Russian, the word is situatsya. And I've heard recently that a person's accent will very often come out when there's a similar word in their own language, so they're used to saying it in a particular way. And it's difficult for them to adjust or maybe remember to change their pronunciation when they're speaking in a foreign language if they already have a very similar word in their own native language. So, situatsia needs to be situation. So the T-U in situation, in this case, is pronounced as C-H, ch. So I wanted to uh, give you guys some useful words uh, to remember when you pronounce the letters T-U as C-H. And there are some basic guidelines to go by. So I did some research before making this video and I hope you guys find this interesting. Also, I realized that I needed to up my game a little bit. Uh, I'm relatively new to making YouTube videos and to editing videos and so forth. So I'm going to be adding the text to the video. For most people, they've been doing this for years, right? But uh, for me, it's new. So uh, I think this is the best way to illustrate what I'm talking about and hopefully for you guys to remember um, the list of words that I'm going to uh, bring out. And what I've done is I've actually chosen some of the most uh, often used words and some of the, hopefully some of the most uh, uh, useful words for you. Uh, in your speech. So let's first start with uh, the times in which the letters T-U are not said as C-H or CH. Uh, so here's, we'll start with the list. The first word is turn. So when T-U is at the beginning of a word or near the beginning of the word, often it's not pronounced as C-H. Uh, another word would be turtle, and you'll notice here in the word turtle, the second T is actually pronounced as a flap T. Uh, it's not said turtle, although you can say it that way, but more natural for American speech is turtle, kind of like a D sound. Uh, and I believe in this case it's called a flap T, and I'll cover that in a separate video in the future. Uh, tutorial turbulent, tumble, tunnel, tulips, tune, tummy. And the last word, very interestingly, actually combines a hard T as well as a T that sounds like a CH tumultuous. So you'll notice the T at the beginning of the word, the T-U is two, and the second instance of the T-U is said as ch. So I love that word because it very much illustrates both the hard T-U as well as the C-H version. Tumultuous. Okay. So another instance in which it's said as tu and not chu is when the tu is near the beginning of a word. Maybe it's just prefaced by another letter, such as the letter s, which often happens, uh, which gives us the, the following list of words. Student, stupid, 
stunt, stuck, stuff, studio, stumble, stunning, and attune. So the last one does not start with the letter S. That's kind of an exception to that rule. But yeah, if it's towards the beginning of the word, uh, even if it's not uh, necessarily stressed, um, it typically, I, I think all of these examples, it was stressed. Uh, but uh, yeah, if it's towards the beginning of the word, then generally it's going to be to and not chew. Okay, so other times in which it's said as to and not ch is when it's at the beginning of a stressed syllable, as in the following words, return, disturb, opportunity, that last T is kind of like a D-Y, opportunity, opportunity, and not necessarily opportunity, opportunity. Institution, and here I wanted to remind everyone that the second is illustrated here with actually the third T in this word, uh, we say is sh. So you should be familiar with that, but the T-I-O-N, for example, or just T-I-O is typically sh. So institution. Same with the last word here, constitutional. Okay, so I want to give you a list where T-U does actually sound like a C-H. When does that happen? And uh, in my research, I realized that it happens uh, particularly if, that sil if it's a beginning of a syllable that's unstressed and probably... In most of the rest of the words in the English language, other than the ones that I, other than the instances that I've mentioned so far. So if it's not stressed um, and it's towards the end of the end of a word, in general, you're going to find, not in all cases because there are always exceptions, but in general, you're going to find that it's said as a ch. So chew. All right, let's go through. It's quite a long list, but we'll go through this. Again, I think that these words should be very handy, very useful for you. Uh, here we go. Actual, adventure, agriculture, architecture, capture. Interestingly on that one, the CH sounds a little bit more like an SH, so it's kind of a combination. Listen one more time. Capture. So some people might say capture with a hard CH, but generally it's kind of a CH that morphs a little bit into an SH sound. Capture. Century. Congratulations. Congratulations. Creature, culture, or cultural, departure, eventual, feature, fortune, furniture, future, gesture, infrastructure, intellectual, lecture, legislature, manufacture, mature. Okay, so I, I put a little star next to this one because in, I believe in British English and also as an alternate pronunciation in English, it's said as mature. Although typically we will say it as mature, but both ways are actually correct. Mixture, mutual, nature and natural, 
punctuation, ritual, sculpture, signature, and here's the word that we started with, situation, spatula, spiritual, statue, temperature, also put an asterisk here because uh, although the word is written as temperature, and that's a fine pronunciation, in Native American English, we often say temperature, temperature. So we kind of smoosh it together. You can say temperature, but in natural everyday speech, we just say temperature. Texture, torture, back to my favorite word here, tumultuous. I said sh at the end, tumultuous. So in the beginning of the word, it's two. Towards the end of the word, it's chew. Tumultuous, tumultuous. Venture, virtue, virtual. Okay, now finally, let's look at a few exceptions uh, where the TU is part of an unstressed syllable and it's towards the end of the word, but it's said as to instead of chu. And again, these are exceptions to the rule and uh, not the norm. Attitude, you could add altitude. Status, magnitude, costume, and momentum. So I think the lesson to take away from all this, besides just remembering a lot of the words where TU sounds like CHU, it's important to use your auditory memory. So you need to listen a lot. Most pronunciation mistakes, I believe, come from simply reading certain words, which I think reading is a great way to expand your vocabulary, but you shouldn't neglect listening to podcasts, uh, watching videos, but basically training your ear, training your auditory mem uh, memory so that you can much more easily remember when a TU is actually said as chew. So we've tried to give some structure around it. What kind of rules or guidelines are there to give you the guidance that you need in order to remember? Is it said as two or is it said as chew? Uh, and so hopefully this will be helpful. But at the end of the day, the best way to remember is using your auditory memory based upon what you've heard. So with that, we'll wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to uh, put any questions or commentary that you have below. Subscribe, click like, and uh, take care. Bye, guys.